Okay, today's video is on 3.1 molecular polarity. The science understanding that you need for this section here is that the shapes of molecules can be explained and predicted using three dimensional representations of electrons as charged clouds. And we'll also be using valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or the VSEPR theory to explain the shape. The polarity of a molecule results from the polar character of the bonds and their spatial arrangement is the second understanding. So what do you need to be able to do for this section? Well, you need to be able to draw and annotate diagrams showing covalent bonds with non-bonding pairs and the shapes of molecules and ions in which there's only one central atom and up to eight valence electrons. You also need to be able to predict and explain whether or not a molecule is polar given its spatial arrangement. So here we go, let's have a look at some shapes of small molecules. So to determine this shape, we need to look at the bonding and non-bonding pairs of electrons around that central atom. So if we've got carbon dioxide, carbon is our central atom with two oxygens around it, it's gonna be linear shaped. Water is gonna be V-shaped, ammonia, trigonal pyramid or trigonal pyramidal, and sulfur trioxide, trigonal planar. The last one we'll look at is methane, which is tetrahedral. So to do this, we look at the VSEPR theory. This is also known as molecular geometry. We look at the regions of electron density around a central atom and the fact that they repel one another and take positions as far apart as possible. Because remember, the electron regions are going to be negative and so they're going to repel each other. What we have is another way of looking at it is electron regions around a central atom achieve maximum separation for minimum repulsion. That's what I'll be using for this explanation. The idea then determines the overall shape of small molecules. So here we have linear V-shaped or bent can be called in some textbooks, trigonal pyramid or trigonal pyramidal, trigonal planar and tetrahedral and there's our examples. If we look at our non-bonding regions or lone pairs, in, um, in a carbon dioxide, you'll have no non-bonding regions. In V-shaped, you will have two non-bonding regions, trigonal pyramid, one, and trigonal planar tetrahedral, none. We also can look at our shapes here. So we've got linear, trigonal planar, bent or angular or V-shaped, tetrahedral, te trigonal pyramid, and then you've got your bent or angular at the end as well. Um, so let's have a look at the first example, why using the VSEPR theory, why methane is tetrahedral. So if we look at, to take into account methane, our central atom is going to be carbon. So if I pop our carbon here and it's surrounded by four hydrogens. So we've got four valence electrons on our carbon. Now if I draw my hydrogens on here, one, two, three, and four, you can see that that shape here, if we we're looking at them um, around the, the electron regions around that central atom, maximizing their separation, you will end up with carbon with one hydrogen, two, three, and four, remembering that this is a three dimensional diagram. So three hydrogens face pointing down and one hydrogen pointing up. And so we say that maximum separation for minimum repulsion, we'll end up with a tetrahedral arrangement. Here's our second one, which is water. So we look at our central atom here, which is going to be our oxygen. So we draw in our oxygen, draw our valence electrons, and you can see that we have two non-bonding areas and two bonding. So if I now draw the hydrogen onto it, you can see that this shape here is what we call V-shaped. So if we were to actually draw this, you would have oxygen to two hydrogens with two pairs. And that's how we get our V-shaped. So maximum separation for minimum repulsion. That's our VSEPR theory. Here we've got ammonia uh, being trigonal pyramid. So if we draw, if we look at ammonia, we've got four electron regions surrounding a central nitrogen. So we draw in our nitrogen. We've got one, two, three, four, and five valence electrons. So you can see that we have one non-bonding region and three bonding regions. We've got three hydrogens that need to be placed onto this. So one can go here, one can go here, 
and the third one over there. So if we were to draw this using bonds, you've got nitrogen, three hydrogens, and one non-bonding pair. So in this case here, it's a trigonal pyramid shape. They assume a tetrahedral shape, but if we're looking at just the bonding pairs, we end up with, as it states up here, a trigonal pyramid shape. So you can just be aware of the fact that even though it says here they assume a tetrahedral shape, because this pair here are non-bonding, then we class it as trigonal pyramidal. Our next one's carbon dioxide. So we think about our carbon. Again, it has four electrons. In this case here, four valence electrons. In this case here, we've got two oxygens bonding to it. Now, if we take into account each of the oxygens, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons around that oxygen. And our second one here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if we take that into account here, you can see there's one bond here and here and another bond here and here. So you can see, I've drawn it on an angle here, but you can see that that would look like this here, carbon dioxide. So it's going to be linear shaped. Using our VSEPR theory, the groups take up positions as far as part as possible, minimise the repulsion, and so we end up with a linear shape. And sulfur trioxides, SO3 is trigonal planar shaped. So for this one here, we've got sulfur and we have three um, oxygens going around. So we end up with this shape here, trigonal planar. So three electron regions surrounding a central sulfur, all bonding regions. And so maximum separation for minimum repulsion, trigonal planar. We do have some other shapes of molecules, so trigonal bipyramidal um, and octahedral, octahedral, but we don't need to know those ones for year 11.